So we're not doing any sales today. Well, this is going to be more of a podcast function, um, which will soon be on here if I'm being told correctly. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a walkthrough of how I think WWE PLE Payback is going to turn out by doing my little breakdown of the matches, match by match, to try to see if I can, you know, call, you know, some of the great stuff that's going to happen today. Pop Buds, what's up? We're talking WWE Payback. This is my preview show. So we're going to go down the card and we're going to say what, who we think is going to win. I This this pay-per-view has very few... Well, it's, it's technically a premium live event because theirs are different than you know regular pay-per-views. Um, but I think this is a, it's a very interesting pay-per-view because it's very... There's not many matches on it, so... These matches should, in theory, unless we've got a lot of, like, um, you know, promos and stuff like that, which could happen, you know, I, I feel like we're going to get nice, long matches. And I think that the the match of the night um, is, is obviously going to be Rollins versus Shinsuke. But I think a sneaky good match that a lot of people are, are really happy to see um, is going to be the... Miz versus LA Knight. I I feel like they are so good talkers and in the ring as well. I feel like the Miz is going to pull out all the stops and he's going to like channel his inner attitude era. I feel like he's going to pull out like a stunner or like a rock bottom or, or, you know, something just to be like, see, it's easy to be LA Knight. You're just a throwback to the attitude era. Um, and I think that would be interesting. Um, but let's start off with uh, what I'm going to, because I don't know the exact order, but I'm going to guess that the opening um, event will be Grayson Waller effect. I feel like we're obviously going to get Grayson Waller talking with Cody. Cody's going to announce that he is um, a free agent and can show up on any um, show now because, you know, he's a Raw star. So he should only be on Raw. But I think he's going to start going on SmackDown because he's going after Roman again just in time for WrestleMania. <clears throat> so I think that's going to be a big announcement. But I also think Cena's going to come out in that segment. And um, it's going to be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if we get an impromptu match uh, between Grayson Waller and John Cena. Uh, I just got a feeling they're going to rope that in there even though he's hosting. I feel like that's just going to be you know something they do. Uh, and then we've got... Let's see. Well, let's go ahead and say that Trish and Becky Lynch in the steel cage um, is second. Um, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm over this. Um, my issue, the, the biggest issue I have is that Trish is calling herself one of the greatest of all time. She wasn't even the greatest in her era. She is no doubt one of the most influential and most important figures in the WWE women's division of all time, no questions asked, deserves to be a Hall of Famer. But there's a difference between greatness and being influential. Without her, there is no Becky Lynch. Without her, there is no women's division as we know it now. So, I, you know, she deserves her flowers. But she was never that good in the ring. She was serviceable, and then she had great feuds with the likes of Lita and the likes of um, uh, Mickey James, who are unbelievably fantastic in the ring. And if you listen to the women of today, when they talk about their inspiration, it's not Trish, it's Lita or Mickey James. You know, they don't talk about Trish being as influential because to them, she wasn't because what she was able to do was give legitimacy to the women's division in a time where they were only used as sex items or sex symbols or, or sex cells. Um, and then she actually started wrestling and then that jump started the women's division. All the flowers and props to her. But that's what she did. She's more influential than actually great. Uh, and then we've got uh, Grayson. Uh, no, sorry, we got Rey Mysterio versus Austin Theory. There is, in my opinion, absolutely no chance that Austin Theory wins this match um, because they have to set up a Ray versus um, Santos Escobar match. The the 
student versus the teacher. I, that's just, in my opinion, just too obvious. Um, and there's no way they're not going to do that. I think it's going to be a great match. I think it's going to showcase how good Theory is. Don't be surprised if Grayson Waller tries to help and messes it up for him. And then that creates a feud between them because that would be an amazing feud. Grayson Waller versus Austin Theory. I feel like they're, they could either be one of the best tag teams of all time or have one of the best rivalries of all time. Easily can do either or or both. Um, and then we're going to go move on to Rhea Ripley versus um, Raquel Rodriguez. See, this match on paper is by far Rhea's biggest test. And I feel like they're going to make... Um, they're definitely going to make... Uh, Raquel look good, um, but Rhea's winning this. R- Rhea is not losing this title. Um, Rhea is similar in the standards of Roman, where it's not going to be on a random pay per view like Payback or a, a taping of Raw or SmackDown. It's going to be at WrestleMania if she loses the title. Um, but that should be one of the best matches on the card by far. Raquel is a physical specimen and bigger than Rhea, which is not something she has to deal with very often. Um, I hope this sets up like a longer feud. I feel like these two could have battles that go down as some of the greatest matches in in history uh, because they're. I feel like they both have great power, great speed, and Rhea is so physically rough or at least it looks it you know it looks like when she wrestles it's very stiff whether it is or not it looks like it you know and it's absolutely like it's hard nose and Raquel has used to been the more dominant in most of her matches as well because she's big you know most of the women's division is not as big as her Rhea is and that could be one of the matches of the night in my opinion uh, and then we've got uh, the uh, what I'm gonna assume is going to be the um, main event where we've got Seth freaking Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. They've done a great job building this up, building Nakamura up to look like this monstrous heel that can overthrow uh, Rollins. I don't see it happening. But I'm also noticing there's one thing missing off this card. There's a tag team title match uh, between the Judgment Day, um, Finn and Priest versus um, Sammy and uh, KO. So I feel like this is going to go one of two ways. Either Sammy and KO win because JD McDonough messes it up for him. And then that's what leads to Priest cashing in and beating Rollins for the title, which will create more dissension in the the bloodline, in the Judgment Day. Or they win due to J.D. McDonough, and then Rhea welcomes him in, creating an issue with Priest and everybody else, so Priest can be the one to leave the group. I don't think... That at this point in his career, you can turn, um, you can turn Finn back babyface. I like his work as a babyface better than when he's a heel. I don't under, I, I mean, he's great either way, obviously. But in my opinion, he is far more suited as a babyface. Something about his never give up attitude. It just speaks to a, a babyface, but it, it works as a heel as well. Um, but if they win tag team gold and take it off of Sammy and KO, then there is no cash-in. And then that is the only reason why I don't think that's going to happen. But I think the better storyline would be if they win the tag team titles and Judgment Day lets JD McDonough in, creating this big rift between everyone, really, and Damian Priest. Damian Priest is the one, I think, out of all of them that has the best chance to turn babyface um, because he you, you can like make him almost an anti-hero because he's just so tired of dealing with all of the BS that he breaks off on his own and just starts knocking everyone's head in. I, I could totally see Damien be like a, a the Punisher, a full-on um, 
anti-hero that just does his own brand of justice. And if he sees someone doing something wrong that he feels is wrong, he's just going to take him out. Um, so that could be the Judgment Day, could be Imperium, could be like it, you can literally put him in feuds with all the the um, the heels, and you could de facto make him a babyface heel, which is weird to say. I I know people will be like, did he just say babyface heel? That doesn't exist. Kind of does sometimes, you know, like someone like um, uh, like like. KO, when he was a heel, everyone loved him, even though he was portrayed as the villain. He was still doing, like, to the point where they loved him, you know, and, and that's the, the true, or, or like MJF now. Like, MJF is a heel, through and through, but the crowd cheers for him like he's a babyface. I think something very similar could happen with Priest. Um, I don't know if WWE has has the 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 forethought or or the cojones to pull that trigger, but I definitely think it could be a very interesting um dynamic because like you know whenever like let's say the Judgment Day is beating up on somebody, you don't get the same Cody Rhodes KO Sammy no no no, you get Damian Priest, and you can have Damian Priest come in there and level everyone, and it's still make everyone look good it makes him look like a monster like he could just take on anyone it makes all the heels look like they will fight anyone including another heel you know there's just so many different ways you can go with that where i don't unless they do like a nwo like split like we got the, the the purple and black and then the red and black you know what i mean like i mean and you know if you look at it that way there's a legitimate possibility that could happen because if that does happen finn can turn into the demon and he predominant. I mean, he did wear purple and black as well, but he usually like black and red. You know what I mean? So maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're trying to faction it off like the NWO. And I don't know if that is a wise move. Um, with the way, like, there aren't very many baby faces on either Raw or SmackDown to be able to have multiple factions of the same faction. Like, you already have Imperium. You already have the Viking Raiders. You already have well, Viking Raiders is on SmackDown. Right? Yeah, because they're going up against Kofi and McIntyre. No, that's Raw. Yeah, yeah, Raw. Ra. Yeah, I mean, you got enough heel factions. I mean, uh, I mean, look at like, and then on SmackDown, you got Damage Control. You've got um, the Street Profits now, who are obviously heels um, now. I mean, then, see, that's another good example of a of a heel babyface, like where the crowd loves them but they will cheer as they whoop someone's ass. Like same thing with 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 uh, Almighty uh, with Bobby Lashley. Like he's always been like that prototypical bad guy that you love. Like you want him to go up against the monsters like he is and then and then win so you can cheer him versus boo him. You want to cheer um a Lashley, a, a you know or, or like Damian Priest in that scenario. Um I definitely think that there could be a lot of great storylines that can come out of that. Um, but in, in many cases, I feel like this is going to be a very, you know, average pay-per-view, uh, PLE. They don't really have, um, I mean, there, there's no bloodline. There's no, like, where, where, where's Gunther versus, uh, Gable for the Intercontinental Championship? That should be on this card. You know what I mean? Like, they, like, like, there's no, the, there's the tag team titles. There's the um, world heavyweight title. That's it. Oh, and the U.S. title. That's it. And, the, and you know, or the women. When do we got the women's championship match? I guess. So there's only two non-championship. Yeah, two non-championship matches on the entire card. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, you know, you can sit there and talk forever on how how long you think you know these th how big this show could be uh, i feel like there there's a lot of potential for it to be sneaky good um so overall i've got i'm gonna go all right we're gonna make the final predictions k since it's not the only one that's not pictured here ko versus ko and sammy versus the judgment day i'm gonna go with ko and sammy even though I prefer Judgment Day to win because of the storylines, I think it could just be so much better. But I'm going to say they, they retain forcing 
a title uh, forcing a Money in the Bank cash in from Damian Priest on. I'm going to say Seth Rollins. Um, so Seth Rollins versus Nakamura. I think Nakamura is going to look fantastic and monstrous, but I definitely think Rollins pulls it out. And I think that Damian cashes in and wins and becomes a new heavyweight champion. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Raquel. Rhea Ripley's taking this 1,000%. I hope, like, I would love to be able to, like, st- like cut this clip and go, ha-ha, you were on, they tricked you, and it was amazing. But I, I, I think there's zero chance Raquel wins. Um, I would love for there to be, like, a, a true chance that she has it, but it's just not going to happen. Um, then we've got Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Becky Lynch, one of the greatest of all time, both influentially and in the ring and on the mic versus Trish Stratus, Hall of Famer, Steel Cage match. Becky Lynch is taking this. Has to. Because this feud has to end here. Please let this be the end. I, I, I nothing but respect to Trish Stratus. Nothing but respect to everything, you know, that she's done for the business. But I don't need her in the ring anymore. When she got drafted, I was very disappointed because that just takes a roster spot away from someone who actually deserves it. Because I, 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 she's done all she needs to do. The fact that she's just getting, you know, adding things to her cap now, like oh, first ladder, first Money in the Bank match, first Steel Cage match. So those are now on her resume. That's I feel like she's just padding her resume to be like, see, I am one of the greats. I came back and I, I had a, a epic feud with Becky Lynch. <sighs> I don't know, but Becky's taking that. Um, then we've got Austin Theory versus the Rey Mysterio for the U.S. Championship. 100% Ray wins, but I think he wins by disqualification because Dom Dom interferes, which will get Theory mad at Dom, which will create an issue there, and he will challenge him for the NXT North American Championship. I don't think Theory needs to go back to NXT to revitalize his career like a lot of people do, but I would be very happy if he did. I think it would do wonders for his career if he goes down there, dominates for a little bit, then comes back to the roster like, I'm back, bitches. That is definitely what I would rather see if we're talking about Theory. I think he's got endless potential, just like Grayson Waller, um, and I think they both should have a long and amazing future. And then we come to The Miz versus L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight. Yeah. Dummy. Yeah. There's, again, there's, there's, I, I, I think this is going to probably be the most entertaining match on the card. I don't know if it's going to be the best, but it'll be very entertaining. The storytelling aspects that these two are putting into this are, are fantastic. And this, uh, has been versus never was kind of storyline they got going here. Um, I, I definitely think it, it will be well received, and I'm gonna go L.A. Night. But again, the better story here is Miz stealing the victory, which will lead to further a further um, feud between these two because it shouldn't end here. They are two of the best on the mic right now. Miz is very underrated. I've been saying this. Uh, I, the reason why a lot of people don't give Miz his flowers, besides the fact that he's a two-time Grand Slam champion, I think that's the only one who's done that in WWE, um, but it says he's very safe. He doesn't. He's not a high flyer. He's not, you know, a risk taker per se in the ring. He's very safe. He hasn't had very many major injuries. He's just been very consistent. And consistent is fan is amazing in this type of industry. In in WWE, where you got someone who's been doing it for twenty years and been there every day, basically, and had for what he had to put up with when he first got in because everyone treated him like he didn't belong. Like it, it, it was. Uh, he has a very compelling argument for being one of the best greatest of all time i'm not saying he is but he has a compelling argument um and that narrative i think is part of what's pushing this because a lot of people 
including myself and, and you know LA Knight himself maybe um see himself as someone who can who should be in that conversation when it's all said and done the question is will he be i think this would be a good start um to his i i think i think la knight's winning the the royal rumble i think he's winning the royal rumble and he's going to um go up against whoever has the heavyweight title not roman's belt not the undisputed championship heavyweight title at wrestlemania that's what i think i don't think he's gonna win it but it's going to be the start of his, you know, it, like his, the Cody Rhodes redemption arc. Like where he got to the top and failed and fell back down and has to climb his way back up. I think, and I think it could end up being Cody Rhodes versus uh, LA Knight down the road for a heavyweight title. I definitely think that would be one of the best matches we could get. And I hope with the fact that John Cena is back, that him and... Him and... um. Cody Rhodes have a match. I would love to see them tag team as well, but I want I want the American Nightmare versus You Can't See Me. <laughs> you can't see me. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that more than a lot of things uh, right now. Um, but yeah, so big announcement. Cody Rhodes is going to say he's going to be a free agent and can show up at any show, and then he'll talk about showing up to SmackDown a lot more. Um Hell, I can see him showing up in NXT just to just to be that guy. Um, so we've got uh, Rey Mysterio over Theory, Rhea Ripley over Raquel, LA Knight over The Miz, Rollins over Shinsuke, Cash in, Damian Priest over Rollins, and then um, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Retain the tag team titles over Judgment Day, and Becky Lynch puts the final nail in the coffin to end the feud with Trish Stratus. I wouldn't be surprised if she beats her and then Trish turns for a split second to like congratulate her, and then Zoe Stark comes in and knocks Trish out. That I could see happening. Um, and then I feel like Grayson Waller and Cody Rhodes are going to have one, a great segment, which is going to announce, like I said, that um, he's going to be on all brands. Um, but, yeah, so I definitely think we're going for a good um, PLE tonight. Payback uh, streaming live on Peacock at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you are watching it, do me a favor and um, let me know what you think. And if I'm right. Maybe give me some flowers. If I'm wrong, talk shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, it doesn't have, seem like there's anyone in the room, so I'm really just doing my, my prediction special here. Um, so uh, until next time, this is Nerd Tween, signing off. <laughs>